Chapter 5, verse 1, again I looked, and there before me was a flying scroll. Now, we've all seen that. He, you know, he asked me, what do you see? I answered, I see a flying scroll, 30 feet long and 15 feet wide. That's, you know, it would be different measurements, cubits, but, so it's, it's huge. This is, this is a supernatural, it's like, yeah, back in those days, they had 30 foot long scrolls. It's like, no, it's like a flying scroll. And we're going to find out as we read this, it's got writing on both sides which that is unusual also. They'd write on one side unless they're short uh, of, uh, of scrolls or something. They'd just write on one side. But this was writing on both sides. So those people, are, whoever wrote this, has crammed as much information on the scroll as possible. And he said to me, this is the curse that is going out over the whole land. Now, again, uh, when God gives his law, and this is, again, kind of basic. Don't get too, like, weird on this. If We talked about this before. If God says, this is, this is what I want to do right here. If you want to stand in the way of blessing, you go do these things right here. Now you're, you're in the area of blessing. But if you want to rebel against God, you go over here, and now you're in the area of cursing. It's not like God, again, be careful how I say this. It's not like God is picking and choosing. I'm going to curse you, curse you, curse you. I'm going to bless you, you, and you. It's like he says, this is blessing, this is cursing right here. Go ahead, begin. And even in the Law of Moses, he says, I said before you today, life and death. Death, life. Then he says, you remember the rest of the verse? Choose life. <laughs> it's like, is it going to be a, it's going to A or B? The answer is A. Go ahead and write down your answers. The answer is A. <laughs> and that, that's what he's saying. And so when it says there's a curse, it's not like God has like set this out at somebody. It's just like when he says, for example, Adam, don't eat from the tree. If Adam obeys, he's happy. Things are good. If Adam disobeys, bad things happen. It's, Adam, which one do you want? It, there it is. And so this curse, this scroll, this huge scroll crammed with information. And what kind of information is on that? Curses. It, it, it's, right, it's, it's, it's the law of Moses. It's not like super spiritual. What does this mean? It's the law of Moses. You rebel, this is yours. This is the curse that is going out over the whole land. For according to what it says on one side, every thief will be banished, and according to what it says on the other side, everyone who swears false falsely will be banished. So thieves and liars, again, think business, okay? They're, they're setting up a new economy, they're setting up a new country, a new government, and they brought this back from Babylon, and that's the way they do, you know, a way of doing business is to be a little deceitful, do a little bit of lying, do a little bit of cheating, uh, steal a little bit. The Lord the Almighty declares, I will send it out and it will enter the house of the thief and the house of him who swears falsely by my name. It will remain in his house and destroy it, both its timbers and its stones. He says, who wants this? He says, there's a curse flying over Jerusalem right now. Remus, thanks for coming back. I'm glad you're here. But listen, if any of you think about being a thief or a, a liar, understand, we're looking for you. There's a curse right now waiting for you to start lying. And when you do, we're going to come and tear your house down. Okay. Go ahead and begin business. Now that leads to this next one. Then the angel who was speaking to me came forward and said to me, look up and see what this is that is appearing. Of course, Zachariah says, what is it? He replied, it is a measuring basket. Again, that would be something they would measure wheat in or some grain. It's something, again, in economics, in, in the business of trade. And he added, this is the iniquity of the people throughout the land. Well, th th these are your remnants. They've come back. Yes, but they brought back improper measuring practices, improper business. Uh, then the cover of the lid, the, excuse me, then the cover of lead was raised. So you've got a, some kind of a wicker basket with a lead lid on it. Very unusual because the lead lid, in many cases, would just crush the basket. So again, a lead lid meaning this is serious. Not just a, a, a lid or a cover. It's a lead lid. It, again, it just for me, it pops in my mind about this. I'm not going to make the connection. But like the abyss, the lid on the abyss. It, this thing is sealed up. The lead means we want this covered. It's not just cover that up. We don't want to see it. We don't want this thing to get out. Well, look at this. Then the cover of lead was raised, and there in the basket sat a woman. I knew it. It's the woman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Not a man. The man's trying to keep the woman in the basket. See, that's, now we get the Pump Paul's teaching right there. Now I'm being facetious. <laughs> then the cover of lead was raised, and there in the basket sat a woman. He said, this is wickedness. I'm not going to go on anymore. <laughs> i got to go home tonight. No, again, it's, not, it's just interesting. <laughs> uh, 
This is wickedness. And he pushed her back into the basket and pushed the lid cover down over its mouth. So it indicates a, a struggle. She's trying to get out of the basket. He lifts the lid up, see what's in here? And this woman, this iniquity, again, just as, as identifies woman, starts crawling up out of the basket. And he pushes her back down, covers it back up with lead. It's like, that. we do not want that loose in Jerusalem. Now, there may be a correlation. Again, it, it may be a, a direct fit. It, it may, but I'm just making a, a suggestion. Because this is going to be sent back to Babylon. When you get to Revelation, the woman is out of the basket riding the beast. And the woman may be, I believe it has to do with false religion and false business practices or government, religion, business all coming together. Again, I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there. It's, that, it's debatable. It may not even be connected. It may not even be connected. But listen to the rest of this vision. Pushed her back down in there. Then I looked up and there before me were two women with the wind in their wings, they had the wings like those of a stork. So now these are, they're women. Now listen, we see like in, 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 in uh, medieval times, uh, we see a renaissance, we see uh, baby angels, we see women angels. The Bible has no, knows nothing of female angels, nothing of baby angels. In fact, very few about angels with wings. There are only a couple references to angels with wings. But interesting right here, this is the closest you're going to come to female or women angels. But the problem with this is they've got the wings of a stork, and a stork is an unclean animal. Okay, so I mean, not, do what you want with it, but my, the image that I'm getting is there's this wicker basket with a lead lid with iniquity, a woman on the inside. Then two other women come, and they're not human women because they've got wings, they've got the wind in, wind in their wings, but their wings are like storks with screams out. These aren't necessarily holy angels. These are some kind of creature that is unclean and notice what it's doing they had the wings of those of a stork and they lifted up the basket between heaven and earth where are they taking the basket i asked the angel who was speaking to me he replied to the country of babylonia they're taking this thing back to babylon where it came from to build a house for it that would be a reference to temple not just a house but a place to set this up and in a sense worship it or center their religion their lives around it when it is ready, the basket will be set there in its place. So with that idea right there, it, it almost, it, it's, to me, it, it's, it's saying something about a future fulfillment of this, what, what is taking place right here, which then opens up, maybe it has something to do with Revelation, some popping in there, especially when you type Babylon, take it back until it's ready, a temple, nonetheless. What God is saying there, I want this out of Jerusalem. Number eight vision, this is our eighth vision, chapter six. I looked up again, and this was very basic. I looked up again, and there before me were four chariots coming out from between the two mountains. Mountains of bronze. Now again, people try to guess what these mountains are. It could be Mount Zion, Mount Olive, something like that. That may be it. But the important thing here is bronze. Bronze speaks of judgment. Uh, in the temple, or the tabernacle, the things in the outer side of the temple, outside the building itself, or outside the tabernacle itself, the bronze altar, the bronze basin, places of judgment. When he came into the temple or tabernacle, it's gold, God's presence. When Jesus returns, his feet are like burnished bronze. He's trampling the nations in judgment. Bronze through often, I mean most often, when, it, when it's used symbolically, it speaks of judgment of some sense. So when it says bronze mountains, it's the mountains of judgment. The first chariot had red horses, the second black, the third white, the fourth da uh, dapple. All of them powerful. Ask the angel who was speaking to me, what are these, my Lord? The angel answered, these are the four spirits of the heaven going out from standing in the presence of the Lord of the whole world. The one of the black horse is going towards the north. The one with the white going west. The other one with the dapples going south to Egypt. Then the powerful horses went out and they were straining to go throughout the earth. And he said, go throughout the earth. So they went throughout the earth. Then he called to me, look, those going towards the north country have given my spirit rest in the land of the north. The whole vision began, how long will we have to put up with this? Uh, the land is at rest, but we are not. By the time we get through these, the last vision almost goes full circle. It's like, okay, God, then now the angel here says, I've got, I, I, I'm good, this is good. They're going out to judgment. And this now would maybe even indicate, of course, in 520, but throughout the rest of history, God is going to go out and subdue those nations. Jerusalem is going to be lifted up, and the Jews are going to be back in their place doing what they, they're supposed to do.